Colombia has a new Marxist president by the name of Petro. Let's talk about the pros and the cons, what's going to happen. I'll give you an immigrant expat perspective um, and what we can really expect. Right guys, thanks for tuning in. Um, this is, this might be a long one. Um, I don't script my videos. I talk pretty much off the cuff. Um, and a lot of you are asking, I'm getting comments, I'm getting emails about the situation now. They've all sort of heard the news that yes, Gustavo Petro from uh, basically a very Marxist left-wing ideology has clenched the top seat commander-in-chief and all that stuff um, as the president of Colombia and Colombia now is a traditionally right-wing conservative traditional uh, country a traditional nation and it shines through in all of their morals their customs their cultural customs their norms their societal norms Everything they do is pretty much how Europe was maybe 50 years ago, I'd say 50, 60, 70 years ago, probably just about post-World War II-esque. Um, that's pretty much how Colombia is. Um, right now we're sort of maybe going through the 60s, um, a real liberal phase, um, and it shows pretty much with this election, this has been the left on a long march to really secure the power for themselves here in this traditionally strategically tradi strategically important for the west um, supposedly the right wing west um, here in south america colombia is a ally from the u.s pretty much does whatever the u.s wants um, and you know they've been conducting the drug war which hasn't really been a drug war it's just been a, a little push here and there um, drug production is through the roof but we'll talk more about that in a moment uh, let me say sorry for any sort of noise that I've got here I am now in the north of Bogota I'm in a little uh, barrio in the north so I'm in a rich area um, but there is a road right next to me so uh, there might be a, a cop, a police car going past, an ambulance, um, a noisy motorbike, someone playing some loud music. So please excuse it. I don't really have a better location. I just record wherever. I might even record one day from a coffee shop or something like that. So please ex excuse the noise around me. Next thing is, I got my cup of tea here. Next thing is, I talk a little bit slow. So if it annoys you, on all the video platforms that I'm on, I think I think all of them, yeah, all of them. You can uh, speed up the video, so do that now. Put it on a 0.5, or if you think you can handle it, put it on a two times speed, um, and just blitz through this video. Let me know in the comments any more questions. I'll probably be doing more of these videos, but uh, I think I'll go through a list now. Okay. Petro did his um, his speech, his winning speech last night had his um, daughters out there he's got two daughters and a son his wife was there looked like a lesbian um, and he had his vice president which was a social leader from the pacific region one thing you got to notice is is that the heart of colombia if you look on a map the heart of colombia voted against petro they voted for another candidate a trumpian candidate but we'll leave we'll, we won't talk more about him right now he's gone his history um and then all around the edges on the on the coasts and into the Amazon uh, Petro won and these are far flung play far flung places yeah um, I'm doing this video because of concerns from expats and people just questioning um, what the situation is going to be like going forward so I just want to make clear that 
you might think of Colombia as being one place, one country, one united country on a map, but there's actually many, many different Colombias here. Um, geographically, you've got m like a whole host of different regions. You've got a, a savanna in the middle on the, around Bogota. You've got the Andes. You've got um, the Amazon region. You've got you've got deserts. You've got the coastal regions, the Caribbean coast. You've got the Pacific coast. Um, you've got glaciers here. All kinds of stuff. Real hot, sweltering Amazon. You got it. You got it all here. Okay. And the founder, well, the liberator of Colombia, of Gran Colombia, he basically, he envisaged Colombia as being controlled by a central government. But the problem is you've got a very regionalized, it's, very, it's a bit like a federal system. You've got departments all across Colombia, 50 something of them. Uh, no, I think I got that wrong. Anyway, you've got regions, you've got departments all over Colombia and then you've got regions within departments as well. Um, and they are very, very patriotic, not just nationally, but they're very patriotic about their own region. They've got their own dialects, uh, they've got their own uh, dishes, their own history, their own uh, stakes in, in the liberation of Colombia. And then they've got their own gripes against other regions and so on and so forth. So what you've seen with this election is, is pretty much some regions going in a different direction from another region, from other regions. Um, and I'm going to get back to this. Maybe we'll, we'll do it. Let's do it now. I'm going to say the main your main concern is do you think the Marxists have got control over all of Colombia? No siree, you do not. Um, if anything, you've got Marxists in control in very far-flung places. Um, they, for their credit, to their credit, they, the, those places have been neglected. I don't know. There's certain reasons why they've been neglected. There's no industry there. They're very hard to get to. Um, they also have a history of conflict there. They've been indoctrinated by, by Marxists into some kind of violent revolutionary course. Um, so from, from, that, from that, they've pretty much shot their own, themselves in their own feet. There, there, no investors are going to go to those regions. They're, they're difficult to govern, difficult to control, difficult to invest in. And it's pretty much probably by their own virtues that they've ended up in that predicament. Colombia is also very hard to get around. Um, so the good thing is these Marxists, you're probably never really going to encounter them. Um, in the cities, you get um, bleeding heart socialists here. They voted Petro. They're pretty well off. They keep moaning about their, their condition, their... their their lot pretty much they keep moaning about it um, but these are nothing more than just Marxist students that have pretty much moved on in life and they've got a job and they feel they've basically been indoctrinated into the struggle the revolutionary Marxist struggle they see classism they see intersectionality now they've, intersectionality has been worked on them quite a lot um, and they don't see differences in class now as the main battleground. They see it in, in the sexes, in the genders. They see it in, um, in race. They see it in uh, traditional versus liberal, um, conservative versus liberal, and so on and so forth. They, they see these as new battlegrounds, new food for thought, new um, material to um, get all hoity over. So anyway... The election, I've explained the geographics of the election, where the support base is for this new um, president, Marxist president. Uh, I just want to make it clear if you look at the amount of votes that he's got, he's got just over 10 million registered to vote. Uh, that number stands at around 40 million, and he only got one quarter of what he could have got but it's like that in all, all elections he did 
obviously he did get the majority of those who did vote and that majority pretty much he just went over 50 percent just um and he got in terms of numbers he just got over 800,000. that's the difference that's what his mandate is a puny little 800,000. all right so we'll go on to pros and cons in a moment i'll try and make this applicable to expats foreigners as much as possible if you're if you're worried about coming here don't worry marxists they love mass immigration they're not going to hold up um, they're not going to hold up your visa application they're not going to question you all too much um to be honest Mar expats are doing marxists a huge favor um, expats are coming from the usa they're probably aoc supporters if they're coming from the uk they're probably um jeremy corbyn supporters loss loser jeremy corbyn supporters um and they're just trying to carry on the marxist struggle here in south america there's a lot of there's a lot of food for thought it's a breeding ground for marx radical marxist ideologies um and yeah the expats are generally going to be very sympathetic to the left-wing social democrat um ideology movement cause so they're not really going to touch on gustavo petro we we've even had cases here in colombia of foreigners actually being agitators for the left um there was a big protest movement about last year um, it was called para nacional it was a national strike and the Marxists really did mobilize against what should be a conservative president, Iban Duque, although we know that he's got strong ties to the globalist agenda and he has strong ties to George Soros, for example. Um, so, uh, so does Petro, uh, the new Marxist president. He has very strong ties to, to George Soros, the globalist pictures of him smiling with Bill Clinton um, so George Soros pretty much falls in line with what the globalists have planned for Colombia I mean I can talk about this in in brief it's basically a long march for Marxism um, the globalists supported the um, charade of a peace process in 2016 um, and they ignored the democratic will of the Colombian people where they rejected that peace deal. The peace deal, in short, pretty much brought hard, militant Marxists into civil life and directly into, into power, into governmental power. So we'll put that to one side. I've done videos about that already, but let's carry on now. So, um, losing my train of thought, my line of thought here. So foreigners are not going to be shunned or expelled or deterred in any way so you don't worry about your visa applications you don't worry about coming here for your holidays uh, in short we'll talk about the pros and cons in short do not worry about investing in Colombia okay what he's talked about is yeah Marxist this this is not good news okay Petro is this any president now is restricted to only one term that's four years and i am confident that the right will get their act together and they will field a strong candidate for the next presidential election so i'm pretty sure this is only going to be one term this is not really a venezuela parallel although it is in the same vein these are marxist uh hard wing but uh hugo chavez was a military man and he had the support of the military military is really important here in south america petro does not have the support of the military not by any extent these guys were fighting well are fighting guerrillas in the jungle 
um, they were fighting the ilk and the support base of Petro himself. He had brought in the FARC, he brought in the ELN terrorist groups, um, he brought in borderline terrorist groups, which are basically social movements all across the outskirts of Colombia. NGOs, activist journalists, they were fighting all of them, not in terms of bullets, but also in terms of hearts and minds. So uh, it's going to be very hard for the military to swallow this, this victory from um, Petro. They're basically seeing the combatants that they were aimed at now moving into the political sphere and actually controlling the position above them. Petro is their commander in chief. He is basically the boss of the military. Um, so it's not, it's the military is still, is still against him. Obviously they're gonna have to follow orders, but they're gonna do it um, unwillingly. So the motivation is gonna be very low. They're gonna be less effective. There's not going to be a coup. I doubt very much there's going to be an assassination attempt. But anyway, my point is, is that the difference is Hugo Chavez was a military man. He had the support base of a massive institution in um, the power play in Venezuela. Petro doesn't have that. He just has the social movements, maybe even mainstream media. Uh, and he has support in the Congress as well, senators and so on and so forth. Um, but he doesn't have that, he doesn't have that avenue to dictatorship power that Hugo Chavez did. So you're not gonna see Colombia just fall out completely from this, okay? So let's carry on. Social programs. Well, what is, what is, um, let, let me just look here. I've, I've squiggled some stuff down here. Yeah. We're going to talk about now the pros and the cons, all right? The pros and the cons. Let, let's try and get the pros out of the way yeah there are some pros okay the pro first of all for me i'll be doing loads of videos there's going to be a lot of material for me to talk about a lot of developments a lot of uh, scandals infighting um petro has a, a very shaky pact um with other politicians and we know that the left cannot hold it together um they're jubilant they feel like they've got whole of the reins of power they feel like they're in some kind of um, they feel like they're in a dictatorship they feel like they've got the top job um, they feel like they've got into the vault well they pretty much have and they're going to spend a lot of money it's not their money you know marxist socialists love to spend other people's money be virtuous with what other people have worked for so there's going to be a lot of spending um, they're very jubilant um, they're going to disintegrate pretty quick give it a year two years when they realize that giving away free stuff doesn't really work um, and also they're going to come up against um, the balances the checks and balances uh, in the power game here in Colombia so it's going to get very hard they're going to get very frustrated they're going to start stabbing each other in the back. It's going to be very sort of Trotskyist, uh, Stalinist, Leninist in Colombia now going forward. Um, but the pros is, for the time being, there is going to be absolutely no reason for protesters to come out into the street like with Para Nacional last year and just do wanton destruction, lawlessness, crime, stealing destruction of public and private property, um, ruling the streets, blocking off roads, very much Antifa BLM style protests were going on, but with a next level militancy um, streak to it all. So 
you're not going to see that happen again. Colombians were very fearful of that happening and they might have even voted for Petro to stop that happening. Colombians can succumb to threats, you know. Um, it happened in the 2016 peace process uh, referendum. Threats do actually um, sway votes here, especially when you're far flung or if you're in a South Bogota neighborhood uh, and you just worry about earning your living and looking after your what property you've been able to get. So the pros are you're going to see some social um, tranquility. That's what you're going to see for a moment. Um, I'd say it's going to stay tranquil pretty much at least halfway in or all the way up to the end of Petro's term. Um, so that, that was a, a big one. You're going to see pros, you're going to see social programs because people are very poor here in those far flung places on the Pacific. I'll give it to them. They are very poor. Um, they're on their, they've got really nowhere to go. They've got to go on to um, actual direct action. Um, they have been very easily led by uh, intersectional classist Marxist ideology and struggle and strife and revolutionary um, fight against um, the powers that be. The problem here is in Colombia is that they're very religious. I'm religious myself, but it is a problem here. Um, and people tend to just say, oh, my problems, oh, the situation that I'm in, I can't really do much about it. It must be down to something else. It's always some, they're not maybe even religious people saying it, but it's pretty much a cultural norm here. Just blame it on something else. Blame it on corruption. Blame it on the mayor. Blame it on the regional government. Blame it on powers that are pretty much away, far away from your own personal sphere of responsibility. Um, so yeah, they are, they are very poor and that plays into the whole Marxist agenda. They've got a real breeding ground there and that's where they've got their votes from. They've managed to indoctrinate a lot of people and lead them on, uh, on another path. So social programs are going to increase here. Petro in his speech said uh, he's going to be dishing out uh, animal protein uh, to state school kids all over the country. I don't know how he's going to do that. I don't know how he's going to get fresh meat out to sweltering hot regions of Colombia. Dairy products as well. Um, only, like I said at the start, Colombia is very regionalized. Um, and some, re some regions just cannot uh, have cattle. Some of them just can't even produce dairy. Um, so they're gonna have to do a massive, very expensive um, transportation of these fresh produce. I don't know if he meant fresh produce, maybe he's just gonna be sending spam out to every school, canned spam and uh, highly processed dairy products with conservatives in them into schools, far flung, far flung schools. The other thing is, it's very funny, um, is that <laughs> he's putting out animal protein. I don't know what, what the vegetarians are gonna think um, in, his, um, in his campaign team, in his support base. I don't know what they're gonna think of that. And also uh, in his winning speech, he kept referring to ninos y ninas. He has to, you know, he has to differentiate uh, between the male and the female um, versions of, of nouns. Uh, it was very, very tiring. It made the speech very, very long. But what's very telling is he's not really up to speed with the agenda. Um, nobody really told him that there's only two, uh, that there's not just two genders or sexes. There's actually an infinite number of them. Um, so he's a pretty retro in that respect. Um, sex for him is binary. So <laughs> I don't know how that's going to go down with his support base either, um, because they're probably already adopting what's coming out of the left now. Um, that gender is a spectrum so 
I, I like this um, protein thing and I like this uh, gender, binary gender stuff. So that was very entertaining. Um, pros, what other pros can I say? It's going to be massive spending. So we're going to see a, uh, a real invigoration of the economy. Um, obviously, that has consequences. Spending um, is government spending is actually stealing from the future. But, you know, these guys are pretty much on a these guys are pretty much on a riot rampage now they pretty they don't pretty much care uh, they just want the money they just want the moolah and petro is gonna do it he's gonna appease it that's probably how he's gonna hold his pack together government spending is gonna go through the roof the economy is gonna be invigorated that might actually hold up the Colombian peso it's a bank holiday Monday today, so I don't really know how the markets are reacting. Um, I think we're going to see a blip in the peso, uh, but I think it's going to pretty much hold together for a while. Wait till he starts enacting some things. Um, let's let this truck pass and then I'll carry on. He's going to embolden the radicals. Uh, the left are never happy to be honest they're in perpetual they're in a perpetual revolutionary state and that's all of is about breaking down uh, power structures traditional institutions it's always about perpetual revolution yeah? destruction so at some point they're probably going to see him as the establishment that needs to be destroyed there's probably they're probably even thinking it now they're probably not even going to like it if he enacts a law that's not to their liking and so on and so forth what we're going to see is just a massive battle right now between um, the left's radicalism and the reality that will be smashing them in the face uh, the reality might they might only feel that a generation or two down the line in terms of spending um that's the pros. I can't. I haven't got any other pros here. Pros are. I'll give you one last pro. Uh, Gustavo Petro has talked endlessly about wealth redistribution. That's what we term it in reality. For him, it's the democratization. The democratization. Wow, well, finding that hard. The democratization. Uh, that sounds a bit better. The democratization of land. Now, the pro is, is that that's not really going to affect your regular expat, a, a regular person who's looking to buy up some property in the capital or buy up some property in, the, I don't know, Medellin, Bogota, Cali. It's not going to make any difference. This is my prediction here. I might be wrong, but um, you can safely invest in some property. You can rent it out. I'm sure rental rights are going to stick around. Uh, there might be some more rights towards a tenant, but generally speaking, your property will remain your own. Um, I don't see taxes really rising on the middle class. He is going to slam. It's going to slam the business people, the rich guys and the landowners. Um, and you see what happens here in Colombia is people just tend to rock up build a sort of shanty house on some land on the side of a road on the side of a highway um, in some landowners far-flung portion of land somewhere build it up on the side of a river even regardless of whether that river floods or not or stream um, people tend the poorer here tend to just rock up and just squat i mean for, for us lot in in the uk you could call it squatting um, the thing here is is that nothing really happens to them they don't really get moved on and the law here is is if they occupy that land for about 10 years if they can prove that they've lived on that land for 10 years then they automatically get the deed to that land well not automatically they need to go through a process but it's pretty much predetermined that the land will be theirs uh, what happens here in Colombia is these massive landowners, they could be, I don't know, cattle ranchers, uh, they could be um, miners extracting 
minerals from the ground uh, illegally or legally all of that stuff so you gotta understand Colombia is a real far-flung country all these different regions just massive um, there's places the state has absolutely no presence in which is a pretty good thing actually but uh, it means that these guys just get up to whatever they want they just grow some cocoa plantations they open up a, a mine uh, chuck chemicals all over the place it's not just the big corporations that are doing it it's these guys these lefties themselves um, uh, anyone can pretty much rock up anywhere and do whatever they want um, but the problem is is that sometimes this land is owned by by rich guys uh, they're obviously going to be rich they've got the land they're going to use it if they're clever they'll use it if they're dumb they'll do something stupid on it like just grow some plantain, plantain or something um, but these guys use the land um, they cultivate it they look after it and they do not want people taking it which is understandable um, and what these guys do is they'll it's a long history okay they'll they'll uh they'll say that they have a claim to it the landowner will kick them off um the other guys will take up arms they might you know do an attack on some workers on the on the land or some relative of the landowner and then you'll get a tit for tat situation so petro has pretty much sided with one of them with <laughs> with the rebels pretty much um and he's talked a lot about commandeering repurposing democratizing taking private property and giving it to his gang his voter base and that's pretty much what they why he's got so many votes it's just a basically a big gang of people voting for whatever they want to steal um, but the, the message i want to get through to you guys is I don't think it's going to affect the middle classes, your regular expat. You're going to still have your gated communities, you're going to have your porters, you're going to have your barbed wire, you're going to have your secure parking. Your neighborhoods are pretty much going to stay the same. Um, it's not really going to affect you, okay? Schools, if you want to get a job here teaching, if you want to work for a corporation, uh, that might be another situation. I, I think you're going to see some flight from big from big business. Um, they probably have a contingency plan already in place. Because um, what happens is is that it's a bit like Zimbabwe. You're going to see social groups commandeering land, getting it given to them, uh, and productivity is going to fall. You're going to see mining, the mining sector is going to be hit because these guys that are just going to, Petro's ilk, are just pretty much inept at um, conducting business, doing anything um, with any kind of, you know, um, productive value. In that sense, it's going to be very much like Venezuela. You're going to see some um, output fall. Uh, Petro has talked up the environmentalist game a lot, which means he's going to ideologically um, be against carbon, the carbon industries. Colombia is a huge oil exporter. Um, it, it comes in there with cocaine. Uh, by the way, you're going to see cocaine production explode um, because his support base was indigenous groups and they see it, the cocaine, the narco business, as uh, a key money maker for them so you're going to see cocaine increase but anyway uh, legal activities uh, you're gonna you're gonna see he should actually make moves against oil exportation uh, and exploration and uh, oil business as a whole you should see him make moves against that supposedly for his environmentalist base but then again he's uh, thrown the gen gender theorist under the bus he's thrown uh, vegetarianism under the bus so I suppose he could just throw environmentalism under the bus um, Colombia exports coal uh, and China is a big big buyer of what Colombia is offering so you're gonna see 
Colombia making further moves, sorry, China making further moves on Colombia as Colombia being a strategic ally of the US. You're going to see that link fade more and more now. I don't know, Biden, prob Biden is probably happy. He's in the George Soros gang. He's in the globalist gang. So Colombia is pretty much in the game right now. And I pretty much think that uh, Biden and Xi Jinping are best buddies. I think there's some kind of uh, behind the scenes uh, agenda for globalism. And Colombia is just a little lapdog of that all right now. Um, and Petro is going to further further the Marxist march uh, and the cultural Marxist march here in Latin America. Ah, so we got some cons there. How will it affect, affect investors? It's not going to affect middle class investors for personal reasons. You could probably even be fine starting up your own business here. Um, uh, you're going to see the service sector, nothing changed there. But other sectors, corporate sectors, you're going to see maybe a little bit of nervousness there um, and maybe some flight. So if you're looking for a corporate job, it's probably not all that good. If you're looking at teaching English, um, I'll probably say now is even better than before. Um, I think that's about it, guys. I think that's about it if you're a a righty like me i'm more of a traditional conservative i'm less of a liberal um, if you're like me i was a trump supporter i'm not very enthusiastic but i'm a trump supporter um, i am hard right in europe so i'm against uh, in terms of germany uh, i'm very much against the establishment parties in the UK I've pretty much fallen out with conservatism if there was a new right-wing party like UKIP uh, again I would probably vote for them so that's that's pretty much where I'm coming from the good news is is that Colombians are still despite this outcome and it shows with the very slim margin that Petro has from the voters the very minuscule one 25 percent roughly of the voters um that came out for him colombia is still very much a conservative country uh, and you can see from the heartlands from the center of colombia where all the economic activity tends to pretty much happen um business education um, service sectors all of that stuff government um, all these institutions they are still very much right maybe even we'll leave education out that's going to the left but otherwise everything is still pretty much business as normal um, conservative right-wing traditional still religious um, society it's just on the outskirts on the on the outlines of Colombia where they're breeding en masse um, they've just got a massive drone or droid voter base that just come out and dogmatically vote left no matter what just because they've been indoctrinated by their social leaders social leaders by day guerrillas by night um, that's how I term it um, I think I'll leave it there. Let me know in the comments down below. It's been a long one, 40 minutes, I'm sorry. Uh, let me know if I haven't answered your questions, your concerns. Let me know in the, in the comments down below. Get in direct contact with me. A lot of you are in direct contact with me. So get in contact any which way and let me know your comments and I'll probably do another video like this. Petro is gonna be inaugurated on the 7th of August. Uh, it's the Battle of it's the anniversary of the Battle of Bojaka when they uh, pretty much dealt a decisive blow against uh, imperialist Spain. Just a little history lesson there for you. Stay tuned for an announcement. Much love.
Right guys, this is an emergency appeal, a real big one. I don't want to sound too Alex Jones-esque in claiming that I'm the most censored person online, but I am plagued by big tech censorship. I've had accounts deleted, uh, shadow banning, service interruptions, um, it's all happening. So I just want to take a moment to really appeal to you guys because I do produce content on a host of other platforms. I'm on old tech media, I'm on old tech channel, I'm on the whole shebang, okay guys? And I just want to take a moment, if you can, to help me out. If you've made it this far into the video, just look down into the description. It's only a few seconds and just take a moment to subscribe and follow me everywhere that you see down there that you have an account for help me out